like to welcome everyone today to Straight Talk. And with me is Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, Senior Director of GBAC. Hello, Gavin. Hi, Jeff. And Doug Hoffman, the Executive Director of Normie. Good afternoon, Doug. Hey, Jeff. Good to see you. Good to see you both. We're going to talk about important points regarding indoor air quality, and we're going to cover a couple of questions. Uh, the first one I want to get into is uh, with you, Gavin. Why is this such an important topic today? Oh, this is good, Jeff. I really want to set the scene here, the impact of uh, air quality on human health. Um, it's well-researched, it's well-known, and I want to stress how important it is. Uh, let's understand that air quality can influence almost every aspect of our lives, from our moods, uh, energy levels, to our sleep, our productivity. And it's really interesting that, yes, COVID-19 pandemic has raised um, the, the topic, the discussion about uh, indoor air quality. But let's go back before that. Let's go back to 2019. Now, if we look at the, the information, the data we had there, this is before the COVID-19 pandemic. Air pollution was associated with about 7 million deaths globally in that year. That's more than alcohol use, malnutrition, physical activity and drug use combined. And we know, um, again, as scientists, as epidemiologists, we know that indoor air contains a variety of contaminants. Uh, we talk about the particles or, or particulate matter. Um, we know about biological contaminants, the mold, the bacteria, the fungi, the dust mites, the viruses, the spores, the pollen. And there's over more than 400 organic and inorganic chemical compounds, which are associated with adverse health effects, Jeff. So let's think about where do we spend the majority of time in the day, 90% of what we do, most of us, it, we spend indoors every day. So 90% of our time is spent indoors. We want, I think what, what we Doug and I want to do and help everyone today is to help everyone un understand that indoor clean air is not a luxury. It should not be a luxury. And the good news is that we have some solutions we want to share with everyone. Good start to our discussion, Doug. Let's go to you. And I think what people, maybe the first point to really appreciate is a difference in terminology. We hear the term air purifier and air filter. Can you talk about that? Yeah, that's a great place to start, Jeff, because I think fundamentally, if we don't understand what's going on with these technologies, it's very difficult to sort out what we really need and what we don't need. So the interesting thing about a filter is a filter is passive technology. And what I mean by that is you're bringing the pollution to the solution. Uh, in our training, we talk about a, a mouse trap. You put cheese on the mouse trap, you're waiting for the mouse to find the trap. That's passive, it's just sitting there waiting for the mouse to get there. And if you think about it, if you've got a filter and you're bringing, drawing the pollution to the solution, if I've got the filter over here and the pollution over here, whatever the contaminant is, and I'm drawing it, the pollution to the solution, am I standing? Well, in fact, I am standing in the pollution. Purification technology or purifiers are actually proactive technologies, and they're sending out oxidizers and hydroxyls and other things to cleanse the air and to reduce the contaminants. And so in this case, I'm actually taking the solution to the pollution. And so I'm standing in the solution. And there are a lot of great technologies out there. Of course, we always recommend both. You need to have a good filter to collect the stuff as it's aggregated and dropping out and so forth. But you also need this proactive technology to go get the stuff. And it's interesting to me that the best air purifiers on the market are technologies that have a, this kind of synergistic view of the contaminants and utilizes the pros of each of those technologies. I love that example. Um... Makes a lot of sense, Doug. Thank you for making it easy to understand. So if you were going to get a mouse uh, proactively, you, you'd bring in your cat. I've done that part already. So <laughs> He's no, going to be stuff. on Seek and Destroy. Yes. <laughs> um, another term in the industry that we hear is ionization. So, Gavin, what does that mean to you and how important is that? Yeah, I think this is great. This is the opportunity we want to take, uh, Doug and I, right now, Jeff, is that there are a number of technologies that we want to start today um, with understanding what ionization is. 
and the fact that uh, it's well researched, there's science out there uh, that shows that it can remove these particles out of the air. Uh, but more importantly, one of the things we're going to do over this series that we're starting now, Jeff, is to talk about these technologies, the science that's out there, and also the gaps and the real world gaps. Does it work in every room? Does it work in every indoor uh, situation that we, we find ourselves in? So I wanted to hand this over to, to, to Doug for a moment. Let, let's talk about ionization, Doug, and, and what how does that work? Sure, that's a uh, super question. I think what's interesting, I was raised in Tampa and every afternoon in Florida in June, it would rain. Huge storm, huge lightning strikes. In fact, it's the lightning capital of the northern hemisphere, I think, uh, I've been told. But that lightning, the lightning is actually the ionization process. And that's one of the technologies that cleans the air. And that's one of the reasons why it smells so clean after a lightning strike. So ionization can be mechanically reproduced or synthesized typically using a needle point. That's normally how it's done, or a brush. And the idea behind it is that it's sending out this negative charge. And when it sends out the negative charge, it when it hits the particles that are in the air, which are most of which are positively charged, it actually reverses the uh, polarity. And so what you end up with is you end up with positives and negatives, and what are they going to do? They're going to aggregate, clump together, get larger and larger and larger, and eventually drop out or get trapped in a filter where otherwise they might just go through the filter. We used it quite a bit in the construction industry. If we had a, a real dusty environment, we could put ionizers in each corner and it would actually reduce the dust in that construction site. So ionization is incredibly powerful. One of the coolest things out there is this new technology called dielectric barrier ionizer. And instead of a single ion, it actually sends a clustered ion, much like this, that has positives and negatives. This isn't it, but just looks like this, I think. But it sends out positive and negative ions, and that's a much larger charge to deal with not only the particles that are in the air and reduce those, but also to ionize and destroy bacteria and fungus. It's a really, really powerful thing that, that's actually lethal to microbes, harmful to humans, but lethal to, to uh, the microbes. And this is really important. Uh, everyone understands this, Jeff. This clumping is so important. If you look at, you know, we, we're going to help define what is indoor air pollution. What what what's in the indoor air? Now, you know, a lot of young people will see around about fifty microns. When you get to over fifty, like most of all of us, all three of us are here on this call, we probably don't see anything, you know, less than a hundred microns. That's just <laughs> the way life is. Now, if we look at when you start to see things in the air and you can actually see them visibly, that's about less than 1% of air pollution. The other, All the other 99% is you can't see it. And so what Doug is talking about with this ionization is by clumping, you're making those air particles heavier. So with good air quality, when we try to manage and, and, and you know, for air, indoor air quality, we want to get things clumped together and push them to the ground where we can clean them up. Or we want to clump them together and use um, the, the the ventilation, the movement of air, like unidirectional airflow, to push them towards a filter or out a window that's open or something like that. So this clumping is so important. It increases the weight um, of, of the indoor air particles. It allows us then to move them in certain directions, which will then lead to better or improved indoor air quality. You know, Gavin, we've always seen that uh, shaft of light in the morning with all those particles floating around. Those are those submicron particles you're talking about. And if you move your hand through it, it all just kind of settles back in place. How do you get that stuff to a filter? You, it, By clumping it, making it larger, it's going to get there, and then it's going to be trapped and out of your breathing range. And that's really important, Doug. You, you and I have both got air monitoring, uh, air quality monitor, <laughs> monitors in, in our house. I've got probably six at the moment. They're, they're, you know, we know they're, they're great. They're science-based. They're about the size of a smoke detector. Um, it's exciting that we, we, we you know, I think you and I both agree, we want to see every facility we work with have these in their indoor built environment spaces to measuring it. But just you know, subjectively, when I started using ionization here in my attic where I live, I work, spend most of my time, the sun in the morning comes through the window and I can see particles. And since I've been using an ionization technology here, guess what happens in the morning? I look up and go, sun's coming through the window. Oh, <laughs> and the particles, what's going on? That's because the technology works. It really works. It does. 
I'll yeah. never look at a anything in the air the same way again. Those dust particles, I guess we got to get rid of them. <laughs> well, you know, and the other thing, Jeff, is we always talk about we we fix buildings, not people. We're not doctors. But the truth is that you think about those little submicron particles. Those are the kinds of things that can go right through our our natural filters, our nose hairs and lung hair. They can go right down into our body. Uh, in a heartbeat. So the point is, is that if you can get those out of the air, you're going to have a much healthier, safer, cleaner environment. Mm -hmm. Great information. And we'll look forward to the next um, episode in this series.